We're often asked, uh, what's the secret behind the uh, application of the Garden Master Nutrient? And I'm here today to tell you what that is. <gasps> Follow the instructions. Whoa! Hi, this is Ted Hallett, the Garden Master, and we're here to go over a few of the things that uh, you're going to need in mixing your nutrient, and then how to ap apply the nutrient uh, once you have it mixed. To begin with, you should have a good quality pH meter. Uh, this is one we use on the farm. It's called the pH Pro. Uh, it's a total kit. has the regent for verifying the, the um, calibration of the pH meter. This particular one has the sensing uh, probes on the tip. And then we also have a, a bottle for a demineralized, or you also call it um, a pure water for rinsing the, the pH meter. Here's another example of an X-Tech. Uh, it has uh, several methods. These are completely waterproof. Its tip is on the end, the probe. And as these tips wear out, they can be changed. And these are waterproof, so if you drop them in or toss them in the nutrient, uh, you won't have any, any problems with them then. Uh, there are other methods you can use, uh, pool pH test kits, uh, litmus paper, uh, but they don't provide you a good quality reading of your nutrient and if you're going to be serious about this, this is a good investment. You also need apple cider vinegar in, in many of the areas of the world. Uh, this one's a gallon size. You could probably get by with just a quart size and of course we use that to adjust the pH. Then you'll also need a, a quality sprayer. Uh, this is one that we offer on the website. It's a good quality brass tip adjustable. This is a higher quality, it's about twice the cost. We don't offer this, but to give you an example, adjustable tip, they're both pump-up sprayers. And then if you want to splurge a little bit, we have a backpack sprayer. They're actually for a mini farm or small garden, or the, the easiest and most productive one to use. Uh, quite a bit more expensive, they're going to run around $100 uh, to $130. Uh, but they're able to uh, provide very high pressure and good atomization of the water. You want to use a diaphragm type backpack sprayer, not a piston, uh, because there are particulates in the nutrient that would damage the piston in a, in a piston sprayer. So it'd have to be a diaphragm type of sprayer. It's helpful to have a couple good clean buckets uh, with a lid you can set on them. Uh, this is what you can use for mixing. You can use a smaller container but the five gallon bucket just makes it easier to work with. And then find yourself a large funnel with a screen in the bottom. And this is an 80 mesh screen. And when, you, when it's through steeping, uh, you can run it through this and that takes any of the, the larger particulates out uh, so that you don't have any spray or clogging issues. And if you want to spend the time, you can use a quality cheesecloth or dish towel also uh, to strain it in and you can either put that over the bucket with a big rubber band or inside the funnel and again just to take the particulates out so you don't have clogging uh, issues with the sprayer itself. Okay here's the uh, sprayer that we offer on the website and uh, your maintenance of this Basically, you need to take it apart and clean it after you're, you're done each time, after each use. And make sure there's no plugging. And, and then this tip is adjustable so you get a fine spray. And then on the inside, you want to pay particular close attention to the suction line. As you can see, that has a fine screen in it keep make sure that that's kept clean and then run uh, clean water through the, the sprayer so that you've got any residue rinsed out and it's a good idea to leave a little bit of water in the bottom of it so that none of the, the seals dry out on the inside so you know leave a cup of water in the bottom so the humidity 
uh, stays up in the container and that'll extend the life of it and then make sure you have a good seal and these are pump up so you get high pressure this is the backpack sprayer and you want to be sure if you make that investment that you get the diaphragm tight now you can see the diaphragm will be flat and, and round if it's a piston it'll be about two and a half inches in diameter and, and long and you do not want to use a piston with the nutrient application with this one you're able to keep your pressure high by pumping this with one hand you can set these up for right or left hand I'm right handed so this is set up to run the sprayer when this is on your back from your right hand and pump with the left hand and it basically spins around so when you put it on it's right there at your hand and then on these are flexible it has a lock I don't recommend using the lock but there's a filter on the inside your tip again you want to uh, keep this clean comes off there's a screen inside of taking the screen out of this one unless you have a stainless steel screen in it it's going to corrode anyway and cause challenges so if it if it's not a a uh, stainless steel go ahead and cut it cut the screen off and then it has a rubber seal keep that clean and you adjust your spray pattern uh, by rotating this tip when you're finished the same principles with this sprayer you rinse it out flush clean water through it leave a little bit of water in the bottom in order to protect the seals from drying out snap it back together and then put it in a uh, some place out of the sun okay we'll move on now to the mixing of your nutrient be sure that you check on a monthly basis uh, the PDF file that says the Garden Master Organic Nutrient Application. Good idea to print it off. It's four pages and it gives you detailed instructions as far as measurements uh, from beginning to end on application depending on uh, what you're applying it to and age and so on and so forth. So be sure that you put yourself together a little binder that you can put these in so you have them handy uh, for reference on your measurement of the nutrient. Okay, first thing you need to do is we, we filled this small bucket with water, just clean, pure water. And we need to check the pH. We'll use this one to do that. Turn it on. Put it in, you need to move it around a little bit. pH is very important, very, very important. So the first thing you do is always record the pH of your water before you've mixed anything in it. Now this one, it's uh, 7.2. Oops! 7.2, so we'll make a note of that. clean that off and then we're going to start adding our nutrients this is your 5a and 5b these are your base nutrients these will always be used regardless of the time of the year and then depending on the quarter that you're in uh, you will add uh, the seasonal component of the nutrient mix this happens to be number two because we're at this time we're in the second quarter of the year. Now we will mix those. Okay, first it's important that you add the the dry component of the nutrient, simply because um, once you get the spoon wet, you don't want to be messing with the dry with a wet uh, tablespoon. So we will measure that first, and what we need is is. Uh, a level tablespoon 
We got a little bit of wind today, so. Okay. And I'm going to use the spoon to break it up. It's micronized uh, powder, so it's very fine. It's like talcum powder. We want to make sure that we have it broken up in there. If you use uh, warm water, it makes it a little bit easier for dissolving. Not hot, but warm. And it will not hurt the plants. When it comes out of the spray, it immediately cools in the air. Always important on the liquid components of the nutrient to shake them vigorously so if there's been any separation that you've got it thoroughly mixed. Now this is the liquid component or what we call 5A. Smells really good. Be sure to shake it, don't ever forget. Okay, after we've let the nutrient mix uh, steep a little bit in the water, uh, you know, for at least 15-20 minutes, if it's a couple hours that won't hurt anything, we're going to dump it uh, through this funnel that has the screen in it. And that process also helps mix it. Be a little in the bottom of the bucket, so you want to give it a little shake. And I'm going to dump it in. And we'll do this a couple times. That way, we're we're sure to leach all the nutrients out of the dry component that's now in the bottom of the funnel. And it also helps with the mixing. Okay, now that we've completed that, we're going to dump it back into our now we'll need to test the pH again. Okay, this is a little bit of different process than what we use on the farm. When we mix the components of the nutrient on the farm, it all goes into the tank at the same time. However, in order to provide you the formula that I've spent 40 years on developing, we have to pre-mix it in the concentrate form in order for you to be able to, to utilize it. Well, in that process, the the liquid product ferments. So when it ferments, the, the byproduct is an acidic nature which drops the pH of the nutrient. Well, pH, as we'll always say, is very important not only in the root zone but also in your, your nutrient application. Because of that, it also drops the pH of your nutrient. You'd like to have at least 5.5 as a pH for your nutrient when you apply it. If it goes down to four, four and a half, that'll be fine. 
And because of that, we will wait and not apply or add any of the brown apple cider vinegar until after we test the pH and after the mixing here. Take the pH meter again, turn it on, give it a little bit of time to adjust. And oftentimes it won't be required to add any vinegar. What? And oftentimes it won't be required to add any vinegar. Wow. Um, that's why you should be, like the instructions indicate, testing your pH before and after. But hold off on adding any vinegar until after, till you see what that pH drop is. And what we have is uh, 4.98. So we're not going to add any apple cider vinegar to this because we're well within the four and a half to five and a half range. Uh, we can apply it lower than that, but we want to avoid uh, doing that with uh, the small farmer hobby gardener so you don't do any damage. In this video, we're, we're going to use the backpack sprayer simply because we're at the Project Challenge mini farm and uh, there's a lot to spray. So we'll go ahead and add this. Okay, important they always keep it agitated whether regardless of what type of sprayer it's in and we're going to pump it up here and then we want to be sure that we have a, a proper spray so we'll adjust the tip there we go we've got a little bit of breeze today so we're going to spray kind of with the, the wind and the breeze and it's important that we just move through it quick. Now we come back. What's important here is that, that we have a a film on the underside and the top side of the leaf. Oftentimes what the mistake is by the gardeners is they spray until they have runoff or saturation. But if you look at the leaf really close, you'll see that it has a film, a thin film of moisture. That's what we're looking for. That's all we need for absorption. We need about 15 minutes of absorption time. So as long as we have that film for approximately 15 to 20 minutes before it evaporates, then we have good penetration of the nutrients into the plant system. It is not necessary to have runoff and, and dripping plants. If you look real close, or even use a magnifying glass, in going quick, you'll see that the entire leaf is covered with a fine film of the nutrient mixture. That's all that you need. You can spray on the top, you can angle it up to spray on the bottom, whether you're using the backpack sprayer or the uh, handheld pump-up sprayer, and you will get the penetrations you need for the growth. All you need to use is approximately a pint on a 4x8 system in full production. And full production would be 4 feet plus wide by 6 feet tall if you have the uh, trellis structure in place. So always keep that in mind. Don't over apply. The, the 250 milliliter bottles of nutrients should last you 42 months. So if you're going through it faster than that, 
You're spending money you don't need to spend. Be conscious of the, the amount that you're spraying onto the plants. Okay, what you just uh, witnessed is the time that it requires to spray a 4x16 in uh, less than a month's growth. So be real conscious of, of the amount that you're spraying on. You only need the, the thin film on the top and underside of the leaves. We need a holding time of about 15 to 20 minutes to get the maximum absorption of the nutrients. Uh, the reason that we foliar feed is that we're able to utilize 80% plus of the nutrients that we apply versus applying through the root zone uh, you're only able to utilize about 15 percent of what you spend your money on. Foliar feeding also eliminates the potential for nutrient deficiencies because it's throughout the plant in less than an hour and, and through, the, through the root zone it takes up to a week to be throughout the plant and uh, very inefficient. So, Foliar feeding is the most efficient, cost-effective way and the most healthy uh, form of feeding your plants. And that's why we use it uh, on the Garden Master's Bucket Garden. Okay, remember, follow the instructions to the detail. That's the secret. Yeah! Be sure to review on a monthly basis the PDF files on thegardenmaster.com. Bucket Garden page has everything you need. Review all the videos. We have. Uh, 20 instructional videos I think now uh, for your benefit so take the time to review them they're very helpful be sure to uh, be careful on your application pH is important always and pay attention to the detail that's the secret happy gardening Spencer get the work huh